Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Acer Aspire 3. This is the A315-23 series computer. I'm gonna show you how to get inside, access your heatsink assembly, including your fans, CPU, GPU areas, if you need to replace any of those components, or if you're just going in there to clean things out. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way, make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then gonna flip it over to access our bottom case screws. We're gonna take off all the screws on our bottom case. You have these three along this edge, these three along the opposite edge, these two here, these two here, and that one screw there. We're gonna take all those screws out. As a side point, guys, this right here is your battery reset pinhole. What you would do is you would press that with a paper clip or other sharp, small object. It would reset your battery. You'd let it sit for 30 seconds off, uh, and that can help if you're having trouble starting your computer or charging your battery. After the screws have been removed, I'm gonna take my small flat pry tool. I'm gonna to go around the seam and pry up the bottom case from the rest of the computer. If you guys are watching me get in here, you'll notice this is actually very difficult for me to take off. I was concerned for a little while there that there was more screws, but there's not. I had to get my uh, larger pry tool out and I've really got to get it under there and then really crank it sideways to get this bottom case off. It does come off. You don't need to take out more screws, but it was kind of a pain in the butt. Once you have your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now, before I touch anything in a computer, I either remove or at least unplug the battery. So I'll show you how to do that now. Your battery is right here. So this battery is really easy to operate. As you can see, there's no additional screws in here. It's just plugged into the motherboard. So I'm gonna peel back this tape that's holding it to some inside components there. Just peel that back. There's some more black tape here that's over the actual battery plug, be careful. But I'm gonna peel that back. Or actually, I'll just remove it. I'll just make sure to remember to put it back on after. And this battery plug is kinda of nice because I don't have to pull on the wires. It's got a grip on either side. So I can use my pry tool or your fingernails and push on this side, push on this side, and that battery plug comes right out. So that's fairly easy to get that battery out. Now when you have a computer project, it's best to keep the area safe. As you notice, my computer is sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer. If you need any help with tools or supplies for your project, there'll be a link above, also below in the description. It'll have a lot of the tools and supplies that I would use on this computer, as well as all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model. They'll all be included in that link. Now that the battery has been removed or at least unplugged, it's safe to proceed deeper into the computer. This is your fan and your heatsink assembly here over your CPU. So to get the fan out, I'll take out these two screws. Now the fan releases independent of the heatsink assembly, but it does plug into the motherboard. So don't just rip it off. I'll set it aside here and it plugs into the motherboard right there. Just like the battery, there are grips on either side of that plug. So I can take my fingernails or a pry tool and push a little on each side until I wiggle that out. There we go. And then that comes out there. So that's your fan. I'll try to have a replacement fan option below in the description. If you're here because your computer is overheating or, or trying to clean it, you can access this fan now. Vacuum it out, blow it out really good. And that's how you access your fan. Your heatsink assembly is left here, so I'll go ahead and I'll remove these three screws. Again, if you're here to clean it out, now you can access your fan. There's a little bit of hair there. This computer is actually pretty clean. And that's what you're looking at there for, for the CPU. Now, because it's always a good idea, when you remove a heat sink, you always wanna reapply thermal paste now that air has gotten in there. Um, but actually, that's good for those of you that, that are here to do that anyway. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna take a rag right here. I'm gonna take an alcohol combination. I use a 70% isopropyl alcohol combination, and I'm gonna clean off all the old thermal paste from the CPU as well as my heat sink, get it all clean before I reapply thermal paste.
Now that I have my CPU all clean, as well as my heat sink, I'll go ahead and I'll reapply thermal paste, but I won't apply too much. I'll show you how much thermal paste you want to apply. So I have my thermal paste out. I'm gonna put a little bit right in the center. And that's the max thermal paste you want to apply. After you press the heat sink down, it, it'll level it off. But if you put any more thermal paste than that, you risk having a reverse effect and actually trapping heat versus facilitating its transfer out. So now I'm gonna take my heat sink, place it down on top, nice and straight, give it a good press, and then I can go ahead and put my screws back in to my heat sink assembly. And honestly guys, that may have even been a little too much thermal paste. This heat sink is really small. Uh, it, it literally just covers that chip. So if, if anything, put even a little less than I did on there. I'm so used to the larger heat sinks, but that may have even been a little too much, but that's how you would reattach your heat sink assembly. If you have any questions on this video, check out the FAQs in the description first. It could save you some time getting an answer, but if you need to leave me a question or comment, I do try to get to those at least a couple times a day. Please remember to like and share if this video was helpful, if you think it can help someone else, and feel free to subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer tutorials. Thank you so much for watching guys, look forward to seeing you on my next video.